and welcome to Faith and Flower. This is Robin. With summer now in full swing, I have been craving some lighter dinners. So I've been experimenting with three lettuce wrap or sort of lettuce taco recipes that turned out to be a really big hit with my family. So I will be showing you these in today's video, along with some other things I've been up to in the kitchen, like making delicious probiotic fruit soda and scented candles. So if you are in need of some dinner inspiration, and homemaking encouragement, you have come to the right place. If you are new here, my name is Robin and I live in Central Texas. I would love for you to join our amazing community of Faith and Flower subscribers by subscribing. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, which really helps out my channel. My videos are all about homemaking and homemaker life as a Christian wife and mom, focused on uplifting content to encourage you as keeper of your home, whatever season of life you are in. I bought this artisan romaine lettuce at Costco. I think you could probably find it at your local grocery store too. And it's perfect for what I had in mind. For lettuce wraps, butter lettuce is great, but I wanted something with a little bit more structure, like a taco, that would also have a nice crunch. The first recipe I tried is for shrimp lettuce wraps with sweet chili mayo. And I will link the recipe down in the description box. I wash the lettuce and use my salad spinner to get the leaves nice and dry. I took only the outer leaves that will serve as a vessel for the shrimp and cabbage filling and I saved the hearts of the romaine that I'm going to chop up and use in a salad another night. Whenever I have an abundance of lemons or limes, I save the juice by freezing it in ice cube trays so that I can use it in recipes like this one, which calls for some lime juice, rice vinegar, fresh cilantro, red onions, sweet chili sauce, mayonnaise, and a little bit of sesame oil that you toss together with shredded cabbage. To save time, you could use a pre-shredded bag of cabbage or a coleslaw mix, but I find it saves money and the cabbage tastes a lot better when I just take a few minutes to chop it myself. And I especially loved using this purple cabbage, which not only looks pretty in this recipe, but also had a really nice crunch and the deep color means it's full of antioxidants too. I had much more cabbage than I needed for this recipe, so I saved the extra in a Ziploc bag and we enjoyed using it in various ways throughout the week.
making the coleslaw ahead of time allows it to marinate a bit so that the flavor develops before serving. So for the shrimp, I used frozen shrimp that I thawed in the refrigerator overnight. And because it was already peeled and deveined, all I needed to do was to dry it really well with some paper towels. it with just salt and pepper and then I tossed it with some cornstarch to coat. added some avocado oil to my skillet and cooked the shrimp for about four minutes over medium high heat, turning them once when they started to turn pink and being really careful not to move them around too much so that they would develop a nice crisp golden crust. After draining the shrimp really well on some paper towels, I tossed them into the cabbage mixture and spooned that into the lettuce cups to serve. All three of the recipes I am showing you today were amazing, but I have to say, to me, this was probably my favorite, although the others were really close. The lettuce cup was perfect. It was just enough structure to really not be too messy, give a really nice crunch, and the flavors of this sort of coleslaw pair perfectly with the shrimp. I showed you in a recent video how I have been making water kefir this summer. In case you missed that, water kefir is a delicious probiotic soda. It's a lot like kombucha with similar health benefits, but much easier and is something that my whole family really enjoys. I originally bought my kefir grains from Cultures for Health, which is where I have bought my yogurt cultures in the past, but they came dehydrated and while I had some initial success with them, they never really were thriving and so I ordered more from another place called Fusion Teas that came fully hydrated and they have been performing so well. So if you have tried the dehydrated route and didn't have much success, um, I will put the link down in the description box in case you're interested. And this whole process could not be easier and Fusion Teas included very easy to follow instructions that I found super helpful. They suggest using unsulfured molasses to add minerals and now my grains are large and healthy and re reproducing very rapidly. This batch doubled the amount of grains I needed so I mixed up another batch to save as a backup in the refrigerator. And I've also added an unsulfured dried apricot in place of the molasses for some of the batches that I've made which has also lent some really great results. It has also been fun to experiment with different juices to flavor the kefir water during the second ferment. That's where it also gets nice and bubbly. It's just a great substitute for soda, so much healthier. It looks like a lot of sugar goes into it, but the kefir grains digest all that sugar, so it's really not that sweet. 
Grape juice is one that we tried and is really good, but I have to say our favorite juice is the one that I showed you previously from Aldi. It's a blend of juices that is just a little bit more tart, has a lot of flavor, and it's called their Organic Antioxidant Power Juice. This next recipe is something that I came up with based on a recipe that we have used previously and really like called Korean ground beef bowls. And I will link that recipe and then I will just show you how I adapted it. And basically that's just serving it in a lettuce leaf instead of with rice. And then I added a couple of other things with it just to kind of pretty it up and give it a little bit more crunch and flavor. Start by browning some ground beef in a skillet over medium-high heat. To the ground beef, add the white parts of a green onion, reserving the green parts for serving some toasted sesame seed oil, garlic, and ginger. I had some frozen crushed garlic and ginger that I wanted to use up. Having these on hand is so convenient, especially for recipes like this when I might not have fresh garlic or ginger in my pantry. Once the beef is fully browned and the garlic and ginger are well incorporated and fragrant, stir in some soy sauce. I always use coconut aminos instead because it's gluten and soy free, it's a great substitute. And also some brown sugar and red pepper. Then cook until the sauce is mostly absorbed into the beef. Toppings we like in addition to the green onions are sesame seeds and pickled onions. To serve, fill the lettuce cups with the beef mixture and then top with your favorite toppings. To me, 
the pickled red onions really put these Korean beef lettuce tacos over the top. I'm not really a fan of raw onion, but the milder flavor of these was perfect. Sort of crunchy and slightly sweet and the color really added to the presentation. I'm not on a low carb diet, but these would be perfect if you are. I just like the cool, refreshing crunch of the lettuce combined with the sweet and savory flavor of the warm beef. It's light, but also very satisfying and exactly what I want on a hot summer evening. Something that I haven't made time for in a while is candle making. I've even had some requests to do more in videos because apparently many of you really enjoy it too. I had all of the necessary ingredients gathered so that I could do this with our daughter-in-law Lauren when she was here recently. She loves scented candles as much as I do, but we stayed so busy with other things so that will have to happen next time. <laughs> So now I'll have some time to perfect a few things because I'm still learning. This time I wanted to try making them in the crock pot and I wanted to experiment with some new scented oils that I found. I also wanted to make both soy and beeswax candles just to compare the two. I'm making the candles in my crock pot because it is basically mess free. I can warm up the water by selecting the high setting and will melt the wax right in their containers. I've got some white beeswax, some soy wax, cotton wicks, three containers, and some scented oils. I will link everything I used in the description box and you can also find all of those things in the arts and crafts section of my Amazon store. That link is always in the description box to make it easy for you to find everything, so check that out too. I love using mason jars for candles. They can withstand a lot of heat, they look really pretty, and you can use a lid to store them or for gift giving. I'm also reusing this ceramic container. I originally bought it as a candle from Target and have since then used it several times to make candles here at home. And this time I'm going to try using two wicks so that it burns using all of the wax more efficiently since it's a bit wide for just one. This first candle will be made with soy wax, so I'm just filling it as much as I can, and the other two I will fill with beeswax. I've made both types of wax candles before, and I like them both, but I'm just curious to see how each works with the scented oils that I'm trying for the first time today. I have made candles scented with essential oils previously. They can be wonderful, but they require quite a lot of oil to produce a strong fragrance, which isn't always economical. In fact, it's really a lot better to diffuse them. So I recently discovered Nature's Oil, a brand on Amazon, which makes fragrance oil that are better for candle making. And three of the four that I'm trying are all natural. The wax will slowly melt in the warm water and I will add more wax as needed. And once the jars are full and completely melted, I can add the fragrance. Besides being less messy, I find that this is an easy way to make candles because the crock pot can do its thing while I accomplish some other things in the kitchen. I don't have to move as quickly as I do when melting the wax over the stove top in a double boiler. As you can see, the soy wax melted much faster than the beeswax. It's now ready for the fragrance, so I'm going to combine some coffee bean scent along with vanilla butter. As soon as the scents hit the wax, our kitchen smelled amazing. This combination smells just like a coffee shop. I am also experimenting with the amount of oil to add and I don't want to go overboard so I'll be conservative this time and if I decide I want more scent I will remember to add more next time. I used about 50 drops of the coffee and 25 drops of the vanilla butter which is about the same amount of essential oils that I normally use. 
After giving the wax a good stir to make sure that the oils are well distributed, I put in the wick. <laughs> this is a little trickier than using something to stick the wick to the bottom of the jar and then pouring in the wax, but with a little bit of adjusting, it works. For the beeswax candles, I used lavender vanilla in one and coconut ginger almond in the other. Oh, they both smell so good. <laughs> Again, I used about 50 drops per candle. I also learned from my past experience with making beeswax candles that cooling the wax very slowly is super important. So the crock pot is great for that because I can unplug it and just allow the candles to cool right here. The next morning, all three candles were cool and ready to use. The soy wax is definitely the easiest to work with, so if you are new to candle making, it's a great type to start with. It melted easily and quickly and cooled perfectly on the countertop. The beeswax takes a little more time to melt and you do have to be more careful not to allow them to cool too quickly. Otherwise, holes can develop in your candles and they can shrink away from the sides of the container, which actually happened with one of mine, but not too bad. <laughs> I also discovered that the soy worked the best with the scented oil, giving off the most fragrance. The beeswax gave off a more subtle scent and the beeswax sort of has a scent of its own, but I like that and enjoy the combination. Both types burn very clean, much better than paraffin wax, and in many places I've read that burning beeswax can even improve the air quality of your home, so both have good qualities. You can also do things like adding coconut oil to make the candles burn longer, and I've done that before, but I find that the pure wax burned very evenly and slowly, so I am not sure that the extra step is worth it. In any case, I'm no expert and I have a lot to learn, but I always enjoy candle making and absolutely love using them in our home. If you love candle making, let me know any pointers you have in the comments. This last Let Us Taco recipe is a twist on the first one I showed you. This time I used salmon instead of shrimp and I switched up the flavors in the sauce for the cabbage. Start by lightly spraying the salmon with olive oil and seasoning it with salt, pepper, and some taco seasoning. Then bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes. This time I made the dressing for the coleslaw with lime juice, fresh cilantro, rice vinegar, and chili powder. Toss that together with the cabbage and then add some mayonnaise to your taste.
fill the lettuce cups with the coleslaw and top with salmon for a very pretty presentation. This was great, but a bit messy when eating. So next time, I think I will break up the salmon into more bite-sized pieces and then gently toss that with the cabbage, which will make it a little easier to eat and will coat the salmon with a sauce for even more flavor. So good. you enjoyed today's video and that you are now equipped with some new summer recipes and a bit of homemaking encouragement. I really appreciate you spending your time with me here today and I look forward to talking with you in the comments. So leave one below and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a wonderful week.